Okay, uh, I'm going to backtrack now a little bit and we're going to talk about how I arrived at my duck sizes. Uh, and from the last video, that drawing that you saw, the job that I'm doing. And along the process, you know, you're giving people decisions on what equipment they can use. I've already done the load calculation, so I know what my BTU requirements were going to be. And I gave him several choices. Uh, Actually, I'll talk more about that in another video where I'll, I'll describe the energy auditing software I use also by Elite Software that ties in with the RH VAC program. allows you to predict energy consumption from any given piece of equipment. It also ties into AHRI and gives you uh, matches, uh, although it's a, little, it's a little shaky. Sometimes things don't you know things come up and they go down on that site and they don't reflect it on the other but we'll talk about the, we'll talk about that more later so I we really got it narrowed down to he was either going to go with the uh, affinity uh, 15 sear heat pump and a uh, or the LX um, series uh, heat pump which uh, so with the affinity it was a two-speed so we had you know, it was going to have to be three ton, uh, even though the house really only required a, just under a ton and a half, because it is two stage. And then the second stage would have uh, been would have given me the full three ton, and and uh, the low stage would have given me around two ton. So that would have worked out well, but the price ended up being a little more of a concern. So we went with the LX, which is just going to be a two and a half ton. So I looked up uh, the nominal airflow actually this this value comes out from what eventually what how I calculated the available static pressure and the external static pressure uh, air handler is going to be a little simpler there's less components to deal with but I kind of just start off on this sheet and I arrived at 0.7 now of external static pressure that's that's really what it's going to run at and Fritz you and we were we're having a little uh, go around with your your your, your situation trying to le learn how to use your manometer and uh, I think I determined what that is but what we, we talked about that uh, or I already commented on that and I think you're going to find out that uh, if you design your duct work using the system you will be able to predict what fan speed you're supposed to be on already you're going to be able to predict what your values are going to be when you hook up your manometer before you even even install the first piece of duct so this is really kind of cool but it's, it's really pretty uh, intense as far as the learning curves. I'm not going to be able to cover all that in this video uh, exactly how to design duct from from A to Z but maybe we get a good start. So with the air handler I don't have to worry about a refrigerant coil because that's built in. Now if you were choosing a furnace see it says refrigerant coil right here and I would have put a, valve, a pressure drop in for that. Don't That's already accounted for so all I have to do is account for a filter and I'm giving that a 0.22 pressure drop and filters are quite a bit more restrictive than you might think they really eat up they can eat up your especially if they, they load up with dirt they'll eat up your static pressure um, I've got a, a supply outlet which is a register a return grill and a balancing damper and typically those values are always going to be 0 0.03 0 0.03 0 0.03 and that if you add that up that's 0.09 that's almost 0.1 so I'm going to add these up and you see I've got a 0.31 that is my total device losses so just a little lower I've got my 0.7 I'm subtracting my 0.31 this gives me a available static of 0.39 now I'm going to stop there and talk about equivalent feet and this is the next thing you're going to have to know uh, you've got a supply side equivalent length and a return side equivalent length and you gotta add them together because the blower sees both sides it doesn't just see the supply side it sees return and the supply side together and that's that's a concept that eludes people at first uh, and I'll show you how to get a rove at the friction rate that's where I'm going to be dialing my uh, duculator to and but I will always check velocity as well and we'll get to that let me flip here to uh, let's see. And this is a uh, this is cal uh, 
we'll, we'll, we'll jump back a little bit. There's so much information to cover, but off of my load calculation program, I, I gleaned uh, heating BTU and cooling BTU requirements for each room. Now, of course, it also gave me CFMs, but it does some things that I don't like, and I'd rather just use the manual D method, manual mode after this, uh, after I get th these values out of that calculation. I, I used to use the CFM ratings right from that software, but when I'm really getting in depth, I like to just go the extra step and, and just kind of confirm. So I go ahead and uh, at the top here, you've got to you got to create a a modifier, and so I've got my CFM. So that's heating floor CFM. It's gonna be the same with cooling. Uh, cooling CFM and then you take your BTU and you divide the you divide the CFM by the BTU and then you get a modifier and all that does is take it and give you something you can multiply against each one of these because if you add all these up so on the heating side they're all going to add up to the, the total heating value so it's just it's a way to give you a percentage uh, according so you end up with hundred percent of your CFM at the end so then you'd multiply your Heating modifier, which in this case up there is a .04432. Once I round it off, it goes on for infinity probably uh, beyond the decimal point. But you know, five six places right at the decimal point is enough uh, to really come out. Just you know, even if you're off, you're going to be off of one CFM probably. So you'd multiply that by your BTU, and the outcome is going to be your heating CFM. You do the same for the cooling. You do that all the way down. And you end up with your heating and cooling CFMs, and you're going to choose the higher of the design CFM. And in some places, I'm going to have two registers, so I take that 272 and I divide it by two, and I reflected that as 136. So now, as far as equivalent, let's get back to equivalent lengths. And this is the crux of the matter. This is. You're going to end up have to make it. You don't have to make a you know 3D model or anything that elaborate. You can make a little stick figure drawing of your duct system. But what you want to do is note what fittings you're going to use. So let's look at see what we've got here as far as you're looking for the longest runs. And there's going to be a long a supply run. And it doesn't actually the longest run could be the closest to the unit. If you got a bunch of elbows in it. Uh, you're going to find out that, you, that the linear feet is nothing. The actual length of the duct is nothing compared to the equivalent length of the fittings. So I ended up with a supply run that was 300 feet equivalent length. And the trunk length was only 15 feet. The run out length was 5 feet. I had 20 feet. It was 20 feet away from the air handler, from the blower. Just 20 feet away from the blower and it's got an equivalent length of 300 feet. Now why? Well, because you all on this side you see it says group, you know, group one, two, three, four, and then you see it skips to eight. It's because five and six and seven uh, have to do with the return. You see those reflected over there. Let me back out just a touch to get. I don't know if hopefully you can still see all that. Uh, so what I do is, as I'm imagining the duct system and every fitting that has to go into it. Uh, if I don't make a 3D drawing, then I've got to note every every type of fitting. And for instance, uh, group one. Okay, so I have on group one that is going to be supply fittings at the air handling equipment. And it gives you all kinds of different different designs and I think it was this one was 1G I'll be doing something like this so my equivalent feet for that piece was 35 and uh, it can get really stupid say a, a square throat deadhead thing like that the equivalent feet is 120 feet hopefully you can see that 120 even a, a register takeoffs Takeoffs are complicated. Uh, how many downstream branches there are affect the one behind it. You know, you can get up to 95 feet. You can get up to uh, on a side take of top takeoffs. You can get up to 105 feet with the uh, you know if there's four or five 115 if there's five more downstream from it. 
and if you look across there it was just 70 if it's if there's zero if it's the one on the end so and every time there's a reduction that changes that and you reset back to zero so you know there's and then get into returns you got all your different return fittings so my longest return uh, was 352 feet and this for fun and giggles let's look at the actual trunk length was 26 feet the run out length was 6 feet so it's at 32 feet there's actually just 32 feet of duct but it ended up being 352 feet let's go back so you add those together and I rounded that down to 350 who cares about 2 feet come up to 650 feet if you look at the chart all the chart all they ever expect you to deal with is 500 feet let me get down here Okay, I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully, I'm trying to get it as big as possible on the viewfinder. And so we got total equivalent length along the left. We've got available static pressure along the bottom. Now I, I remember I bumped it up to 0.7. I actually start, always start off at 0.5, uh, but I saw quickly 0.5 wasn't going to take care of us. So 0.39 is about 0.4. Get a ruler. And I'm off the chart. However, I can extrapolate, and I know that it works. So, and these lines here, you've got a 0 0.06, 0 0.08, 0 0.1, 0 0.12. You can do this with math. You don't have to have this chart, but this is a good vis visualization. You got a 0.14 and a 0.18. Well, 0 0.08 is about where it runs out at 500 feet at a 0.4. You can't go any further than that. Well, we're at 650 feet, so we're somewhere up here. So. If you extended extended 0 0.06 off the chart until you hit 0.4, we're up here somewhere, which is because I did the math. I know already that it is 650, and the math is right there. That's the equation. So your available static pressure times 100, because it's all based on 100 equivalent feet of duct, divided by your total equivalent length, gives you your friction rate. And my friction rate ended up being 0.06. And the supply and the return are going to be 0.06. And that's the way you should always do it. Uh, you know, even if you're doing it by rule of thumb and you're just going to take an arbitrary number, say, I'm going to use 0.06 all the time. Well, you should do the return and the supply at the same friction. It will work if you do the supply at 0.08 and the return at 0.06, but it's a little harder to predict. And so we're going to stop this video, and uh, I'm going to go shoot another one, and soon I'm going to move out to the shop and build some duct.